Hello, I'm Anna from Cisco's TME team. Today I'm going to show you how service provider networks went from using Ethernet to Ethernet VPN in under five minutes. Let's go. So what's the point of networks? It's to connect people and things wherever they are, right? Meet Jane and Sue, they're friends who live a few blocks apart and stay in touch using services over the internet. Because they're not very far away, we can simply connect them using an Ethernet cable, say 100 Mbps, and with time, when they need more bandwidth, we can upgrade them to a gigabit Ethernet fiber cable. But one day, this cable fails. It can happen due to the aging process or because the fibers were exposed. So what do we do? Well, replace the fibers, of course. But when we're at it, let's add another Ethernet cable for redundancy. And let's optimize this basic network a bit by adding simple L2 switches. All day long, they learn MAC addresses and switch traffic. You hook them up with all this cool stuff, but then they call you one day and complain that they're not able to use the internet. Ah, a broadcast loop. Typical of L2 networks. But let's blame Sue for breaking the internet and try to fix this. Let's think for a bit here. We ended in a loop because we added two links in the same LAN segment for redundancy and a broadcast storm happened. Do we really need the second cable to be forwarding traffic all the time? The first cable is working just fine. We only need a backup in case it fails. So let's block the second port on Jane's switch for now. And when the primary cable fails, the backup port will be unblocked and it can start forwarding traffic. No more loops because the traffic is dropped at the blocked port. We can turn on loop prevention protocols like STP on the switches to do just this. But wait, I'm paying for the second cable. Why is it just sitting there taking a vacation? I hear you. There's ways to use the backup cable too. It's called load balancing. What we do is make the first cable as primary for some flows and the second cable as primary link for a different set of flows. They act as each other's backup. That sounds great, but it also sounds like work for me. Is there any other way? Of course there is. Instead of blocking one link, we can, we can make both links appear as one single interface to the switch. This is called as link bundling, and the virtual interface created this way is called an ether channel or port channel. So even if one cable fails, we still have the other one forwarding our traffic, plus there's no loop because there is just one interface in the LAN as far as the switch knows. So let's say after a while, Jane moves to a different country for her work. Now there's a whole bunch of networking devices we need to connect Jane and Sue, Let's just stick them into the cloud. We don't care about it. We can switch our traffic using VPLS over the cloud just like we used to. In fact, we can even add back our bundle links at the access for redundancy because we're doing so great, right? Damn, the router we're connected to just failed. It doesn't matter that we have extra links. They both go to the same router and the whole node failed. So wait and think back. What did we do when our single cable link failed? We added another one for backup. Can we do the same for routers? Of course we can. This is called multi-homing or in this specific case, dual homing. That is, we have two distinct paths in and out of our network. So even if one router fails, we have another one to carry all our traffic without downtime. But if you remember, when we added redundant links, we ran into L2's nemesis, the broadcast loop. Remember? Yup, it's back. Due to the flooding nature of VPLS or L2 in general, we cannot have all active multi-homed L2 access. But we know how to fix this. When we saw broadcast loop with redundant cables, first we blamed Sue, and then we blocked one cable port till the primary link failed. The same way, here we can just block one whole router till the other one fails. So we're still dual home, but one router carries all the traffic, it's called the active, and the other just hangs out waiting, called the standby. Here also, we can make better use of both nodes by doing load balancing with the traffic. I know what you're thinking. What caught us out of planning and designing all this load balancing stuff last time was ether channels. But how can we bundle links if they go to different routers entirely, right? But you're in luck. Ether channels that span multiple routers can be achieved using a feature called MC lag. We can have one port channel from the switch going to two different routers, but the switch thinks it's connected to one single chassis and load balances traffic automatically among the bundles links. That's awesome, right? Yes, but we still can't use both the routers to actively forward traffic because of Mr. Bum Loop. So is there really no way to have multi-active redundancy with L2 networks? Q eVPN. At last, we can put all our multi-home routers to work and not worry about loops. How? Well, that's a video for another day. Be sure to subscribe and comment if you like this one, and then maybe I'll explain how. Deal?